Thank you for coming. For those of you that don't come on a regular basis, we welcome you. We're so happy that you're here with us tonight. And you have to go online. We want to welcome you as well. Um, for our first time guests, if you haven't already, if you haven't um, built out a connect card, please do so. Or you can go ahead and scan the code on the screen to fill it out from your smartphone. Um, we do ask that you please download the Church Center app for upcoming events, giving, and being a part of small groups. Be sure to download it and choose the Citadel as your church location. Um, and we're happy to announce that we have a new Facebook page under Citadel Tucson. Please like it, share it, and follow it. Um, uh, we also want to encourage you to come and be a part of our pre-service prayer. Um, every service um, before service, we do it about an hour before service. So it's usually from 6 to 6.30. We just would want to um, invite you to come and be a part that we just loosen the kingdom of God into our atmosphere so that you can come and just join in with us. Um, we also want to encourage you to be a part of our early morning prayer. Um, weekdays. From weekday mornings, Monday through Friday, from 5.30 to 6 a.m., we have a time of soaking, and then from 6 to 6.30, we have a time of, of prayer, where we pray for our city, our families, our church, for any prayer requests. Um, what, what you can do is go on the, on the center app, the church center app, and join the small prayer group, and you will be given a link for Zoom. We do it on Zoom because it's so early in the morning. You don't have to turn on your cameras if you don't want to. It's really up to you. Everyone's different. Some people are still in bed. Some people are, are getting up, getting dressed, or somebody, some people are already at work. But again, it's from 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. So come and be a part. God is answering prayers and you don't want to miss out. Our next leadership meeting is in person, April 13th, which is next Thursday from 5 to 6 here in the Fellowship Hall. So please make sure that if you are serving in any which way, shape, or form, that you come and you be a part. We want to encourage you to come. Um, our upcoming speakers for next week, it'll be our, our very own puppet, John Harkey. So please invite your neighbors, your, your relatives, um, your co-workers, whoever God puts upon your heart. Yes, friends. Enemies. Whoever, yes, <laughs> friends and enemies, whoever God puts upon your heart. Um, you know, we start at 7 p.m. Thursday nights here. Mark your calendars for upcoming events. We will begin to meet on Sunday evenings, beginning April 16th, here um, from 5 to 6.30 p.m. We will be kicking off our women's ministry with um, Hearts on Fire with Ms. Ana Chavez. Yeah, our men's ministry, Kingdom Men with Robert Acosta Sr. Yeah. And our kids' ministry, um, Cadet Edition with Catalina Campos. You don't want to miss out. We've got these great people. We're putting them into position. Yes. Please get involved. Please, um, please um, begin to serve. Whatever God puts on your heart, please let us know if you want to begin to serve here. We do need we need volunteers for media, ushers, greeters, children's ministry. Please let me know, or there's a sign-up sheet in the back as well. And also, we'll be starting our young women's group, Girl Time, ages 16 to 35. It's a time to hang out, fellowship with one another, and study the women of the Bible. Their first meeting will be on Saturday, April 29th at 11 a.m. at Peter Piper Pizza with Emily DiCochea. Yeah. For more information, you can see her. Or again, at the back table, there is a sign-up sheet as well. Um, please, you don't want to miss out and be a part. Mark your calendars for our prophetic conference, September 7th through the 9th. More information to come. It's going to be from a Thursday to a Saturday. You don't want to miss it, I'm telling you. Yes. And now... I would like to introduce our prophetess, Liliana. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Thank you so much, Veronica and Robert, man. We really appreciate you guys. As you all know that John and I travel so much, and these two have done an amazing job holding the foot down. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. So let's all lift up our hand again one more time. Let's acknowledge his presence. Holy Spirit, we want to say thank you again. 
for allowing us to gather here tonight. Father, you are so welcome in this place. You come and have your way. You come and speak to us. You come and change us again through your word. We want to give you ahead of time all the glory and honor to glorify your name. We thank you, Jesus, for allowing us, oh God, to have a wonderful time with the children. It's the eight hunt. But here we are, we gather together again in your house because we want to hear your word and that is the most important thing. And we want to honor you and we love you, we bless you, and we worship you, God, in Jesus' name. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to say thank you so much again for everybody being here tonight. We love you guys. Amen. Uh, so blessed we made it to church tonight because we flew in this uh, this afternoon. Okay, I'm going to share on offering. I'm going to share with you a scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 21. It says, do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. You will know, I, sometimes you will know someone's uh, Heart by looking at their checkbook, by look where the money goes to, where they spend the money the most. And I know sometimes I stare at my checkbook, I look, oh my gosh, I have given, I just love it. I love that I, one, I try to obey what the word of God says. I pray, God, when I have resources, I wanted to sow it into your kingdom. Yeah. Amen? Amen. This is, I, I just have to share it tonight because I pray that it will encourage you guys. As I was sitting here and looking at the scripture, a thought came to my mind. Melan, you need to sow it again. I, I want to sow because my heart is to buy a building for our church. Amen? Yes. And I wanted to invest I wanted to give whatever that, I mean, I wanted to dedicate it a certain amount. And I, I pray that you guys, I'm not asking you to do the same thing. Ask the Lord to challenge you to do uh, to what you can do to sow it for his kingdom. Amen. I pray, God, I, you guys heard me that I did it last year, that I, 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 I said that I'm going to sow $1,000 a month. Every month, that is above tithes and offering. And I stopped during because we were changing. What many of you know that we're trying to, uh, we're trying to, uh, uh, with all the changes that happened about a few months ago. And then I stopped and I let everybody man. I stopped because of all the changes. But I confess it again, and I'm going. The reason why I say it publicly to make myself accountable for what I said. So I made up my mind. God, I believe that you will release the finances through my hand, so I can sow a thousand dollar into a building funds, so we can be able to buy our own building. Why? Because my mind and my heart is in the work of God. Yeah. It's in the work of God. As I was reading this, this scripture tonight, where your heart is, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I pray, God, I really, really want them to do what I can to help buy a building for our church. And I pray that you please help me. And I believe that your church here in Tucson, hey, don't you want to be a vessel that God will flow through, yeah. that God will release the money through you so we can buy a building for our church? Listen, we are doing it for our children and our grandchildren. We have family members 
that maybe they don't know the Lord. They don't walk with the Lord. But I believe your investment in do the work of the Lord, you are sowing a seed for, for your children and grandchildren or, and your grandchildren to come. Because listen, we are in the age, I am older, but I know we have children here. They are our next generation. And I wanted to make it easy on them that when they grow up, they already have a building. They will not struggle like me. Amen? That, I, that they will not continue to rent. I'm going to do my part. I pray God release the finances through my hand, through the people, your church here in Tucson, so we can buy a building, so we can buy a church for our children and grandchildren so they can gather together and worship God. Because let me tell you what, that it's feel different when you own than renting. It does. You feel like it's your own. Some of you that own a home, let me tell you what, it feels good. It feels different when you own it than renting. Because let me tell you what, when you rent, I mean, we rent cars all the time. When we arrive at the airport, we pick up a rental car. Listen, we don't want we return we return it. We don't even go stop by in a in a in a car uh, car wash to wash it. Why? Because it's not our own. We just return it. But when it's my car, I take care of it. I make sure that I pay, I mean, I make sure it's, it's all taken care, I make sure it's service, it's service when it needs to service, why? Because it's mine. And I know there is a big, big difference when we own. And I, I pray that God will put in your heart that when you sow, you are sowing it not only for, your, uh, for yourself, you are sowing in for the kingdom of God, because as His word said, do not lay up yourself, do not lay up your tre your yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for you, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. But for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Think about Jesus. Where is his heart is? His heart is with you and I. That's why he said, that's why God sent Christ to die on the cross so that you and I can be forgiven our sin so we can come into the presence of God and enjoy the blessings of God. That's where God's heart is at, is with you and I. Amen? Amen. So, I want that uh, to share that with you tonight. So if you wanted to give, you can give it on um, our website or you can text to give or go on our app. And if you want to, you download the app or if you wanted to give a cash or a check what you wanted uh, for tax credit at the end of the year, please use the envelope if you want to. You can raise your hand, we can give you an envelope and we, uh, so you can write your name and your address so we make sure we can, you can get a tax credit at the end of the year. Amen? So let me pray for you guys. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for giving me this word tonight to share that where our treasure is, there our heart also. I pray, oh God, that you help us to invest so into your kingdom. That where moth, oh God, will not be rusted, will not be destroyed. But when we invest it into your kingdom, Father, we will see, oh God, that our, like what I said earlier, Lord, we wanted to buy our own building. We give tithes and offering. Give, give, uh, give to our building funds because we want to help buy a building for our children, grandchildren, so they can gather together and worship you. Lord, we want to own, we don't want to continue to rent. And I pray, oh God, that you bless each one of us here tonight. I pray, oh God, that you release the finances through their hand, oh God, and let them know, oh God, you prosper them. You bless them, oh God, because you wanted to use them to be a funnel of investing into your kingdom. 
And I want to say thank you. Father, I pray as your people kill, give tonight. This is what they work for. They work hard for it, oh God. They wake up in the morning and go to work, Lord. And they gave 10%. They gave offering, oh God. But I pray, oh God, that you prosper them, oh God. Let them know, oh God, because of their obedience to you, oh God, you want them to continue to prosper them, not only financially, Lord, but you want to bless their relationship. You want to protect their family from the attack of the enemies, oh God, trying to come in and destroy their family. You want them to bless their health. Why? Because we choose to obey your word. I pray, oh God, that you bless everyone here tonight. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, as you are giving, I wanted to give uh, the microphone to Catalina to, uh, tonight because the children have a, a short program. Praise God. I'm Satan. I have won. Look how foolish all you Christ followers look now. <laughs> Peter, you did not you denied him not once, not twice, but three times. You should be ashamed. Barabbas, you still deserve to die. Face it, you'll never change. Mary, what happened? There goes all your hopes, promises, everything you ever lived for and believed. All your dreams crushed. Wait, who are you? I am Sunday, and guess what? He is risen. So take all your lives, they have no more power. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Peter, I have good news. What the devil meant for bad, God has turned around for good, oh. and now you will be the rock that he will build his church upon. <laughs> Barabbas, he took your place, and today is a day of salvation. So arise and shine. For your light has come. You, sir, have a chance to live again. Right. Ah. Mary, though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. And morning is here. Yeah. When the sun sets free, it's free indeed. You don't have to live with shame or regret from the past. In fact, God wants you and I to live in his prosperity and blessing. And you will want to repent as far as the east from the west, so far he has removed our sins. I show you the story, but he still died on that place, on that cross. That shouldn't be me. That shouldn't be you. The blood is your precious cross was the Lord made. Even though we are not sinners, he still died and suffered in our case. Today is the day of salvation. He died for us and stood for him. Yeah. 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 Broken dreams, less than go as you had hoped or planned, confused or hurt, heartbroken even, that's okay. I don't need to open. That is the very reason he came. He came to He came to give life, not a sad, broken one, but one more abundant one. So lift your head up, my dear friend, for he has for he has so he is closer to the broken hearted. Hope and you again for his ways are far greater than ours. Only you have the power to decide. Are you going to stay stuck living and believing the lies of Friday? Or are you going to realize Sunday is here and you never have to go back there again? Amen. Yes. So beautiful. <laughs> 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 
John chapter 13. Because there's a very interesting thing that happens in John 13. I'm going to lay a little foundation. Because Jesus says something there. John writes this, this wonderful moment with God. And he says a statement in the first, first verse. He says, it was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. And this word, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. 
Everybody say he loved them to the end. Aren't you thankful that he loved you at your weakest moment? Aren't you thankful he loved you to the end? Come on. And going to love you to the end. And when I think about that, what does that mean? Because this whole situation is, is, is about ready to take place. Which I believe is probably the most difficult thing a human being can go through. Is something called betrayal. Yeah. Especially with someone you know very well. Especially with someone that you love to the very end. Someone that you walk with. Someone that you eat with. Someone, maybe even someone in here have, have been in a relationship. You've been married and now divorced and that, that spouse betrays you. Maybe you have a close friend or family and you've walked out this thing called betrayal. Betrayal is a very difficult thing. In fact, I, I mentioned this, I, I, I think it was last night, I just said it out in my sermon that, you know, Judas who betrayed Jesus, the way, the way he betrays Jesus is he, he walks up to Jesus in, in the garden and he, and he kisses him on the cheek. And it's interesting that people will use, betray, use the relationship to betray you. And that's a very, very difficult thing to do. But when I read this verse, that Jesus loved them to the end. Because every one of us has a choice. We all have a choice. But I honestly believe that Jesus was in the midst of this season of he knows he's going to be great. He's still trying to reach out to Judas. He's still trying to reach out to him. Right. And of course, John 13 is that famous scene where Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. And, and the first, he walks up to Peter to wash Peter's feet and, and says, Meliana, to Peter, I'm going to wash your feet. He said, no, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. Right. And, then, and, then, and then Jesus tells him, well, if I don't wash your feet, you'll have no part of me. How many want to have a part of God? How many want to have a part of God? Yes. Then Peter steps out and says, then wash my whole body. Which means I want to be clean on the inside. And I thought about this thing called feet washing. And I've been in the services over the years where I've seen people wash people's feet and have, that, have people do that to us. It's a very humbling situation. But when Jesus said, go do likewise, honestly, this is what I believe. I don't think he meant that we would have a foot washing ser service every Thursday or every Sunday, mm -hmm. but that we would understand something. It's our responsibility to help each other stay clean. Yeah. Yes. That we wash each other with the word. Yes. We wash each other with the word. Yes. So Jesus then says something that I want to get at in verse 21 of John 13. <gasps> After he said this, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified. Verily, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. Now this is the first time the disciples have heard this. This is the first time they've heard that one of their, one of their, one of their close comrades, close friends, homeboys, is going to betray me. And they start looking at one another and, and they start thinking, who's it? Who is it? And then it's interesting that Peter is the one that opens his mouth. And what does he do? He asks John. Everybody say, ask John. Why did he ask John? Because where was John's posture? John's ear was on the heart of God. And I don't know about you, but I want my ear on the heart of God. I want to hear his heartbeat. Because I realize that when my ear is on the heart of God, then I can hear what he's saying. I can feel what he's feeling. And the reason why Peter asked John is this. Because John was the closest to Peter, to Jesus' heart. And so what happens? What happens? 
He reaches over. He leans into the breast of the Lord and asks Jesus, who's going to betray you? Leaning back against Jesus, he asks him, Lord, who is it? It says in verse 26, it is the one whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of the son of Simon the Aristocrat. Now this is very interesting. Verse 27. And as soon as Jesus took the bread. Everybody said took the bread. Please don't forget that. It said Satan entered him. Wait a minute. How in the world could Satan enter Jude, Judas in the presence of God. Right. How in the world, Francisco, can, can Satan have access to Judas right there in the presence of God? That does not make sense. Because I will tell you this. Everybody say, took it. <laughs> you know what can happen? We can come to church Every one of us, including the preacher. And you know what? I can take the singing. I can take the, the, the word. I can take it. I can actually receive it. Yeah. I can actually grab a hold of it. I can actually take what's in the hand of God. But ladies and gentlemen, the bread is not to be taken. It's meant to be eaten. Right. It's meant to be eaten. It's meant, it's meant to be eaten. In other words, the word is not just to be taken. It's meant to be eaten. It's meant to get inside of me so it can change me. Oh, come on. Right, right. Because there's no way I can eat the bread of life and have Satan enter me at the same time. Right. Notice what it said. He said he took it. In other words, I don't want to be just someone who just takes, 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 takes. I want to eat from what Jesus is offering. Because if I'm going to be delivered, if I'm going to be set free, if my life is going to change, this is exactly what's going to happen. I eat the bread, I don't just take the bread. And so, so Jesus told him, what are, you, what are you about to do? Do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this, since Judas had, had, had charge of the money. Some thought Jesus was telling him to go buy it buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. Now, let me ask you a question. How many know there's people who come and take the word but they never get to live? Because I want to tell you this. They never get changed because they don't eat the word. I want to eat. I mean, we can have, we're going to have a giveaway here in a moment. And that's wonderful because we want to, we want to do that. Somebody's going to want an iPad. We want to do that. We want to be a blessing. But at the end of the day, what is Easter about? This man, this man's body, that was broken for me, who shed his blood for my sins. Yeah. I don't want to just take from him. Yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to eat what he is feeding me every single day. Yeah. And this is and because this is exactly what happened when he took the bread. Because we know, we know, we know that he goes in and turns Jesus into the Pharisees. Yeah. But we also know that after turning him in, he felt so convicted. Mm -hmm. He felt so convicted that he actually hung himself. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says that his intestines but burst open and there was worms inside. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how do I remember this? How do I remember that when the nation of Israel that God sent manna down from heaven yeah. every yeah. single day, bread down from heaven, yeah. and they were to eat that bread yeah. every day, which means I got to eat the word every day. Every day. And, and, and when they tried to save the bread, 
and store it for the next day, it would fill with worms. So you know what that tells me? That tells me that Judas did eat the bread, but he ate the bread when he wanted to. Oh, come on. In other words, he, after he ate the bread when it was too late, he should have ate the bread when it just came from Jesus' hand. Instead of waiting till he made a mistake. Oh, come on. Wait until he got into trouble. Wait until he made, he committed some sin. When he, did, when he did something he wished he never would have done, he eats it in his own convenience. Can I tell you something right now? How many want to grow in God? How many want to grow in God? How many want every day we got to eat the word? Every, that's why we want to encourage you to be in prayer. We want to eat the word and eat the word and eat the word and eat the word. Because it's the word that's going to make us come alive. It's gonna, it, it, the word is going to keep us from Satan yes. getting a hold of our heart yes. and getting on the inside of us. It's the word on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I look at that and I, and I can picture that. And here is how he said, open up word. Why? He did eat the bread. But yeah. he ate the bread too late. Yeah. Too late. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. Jesus taught me a lesson. He taught me a big lesson. John, when it comes to feeding people, don't just take it and eat it later. Eat it right now. Yeah. Church, if there's any time we need to eat the word, it's right now. Yeah. It's right now. Yeah. Because how many need a word? How many need yeah. a word? How many need a word? We need to eat the word. Yes. That's why I'm excited about, about, think about this, on April 16th. You know what's going to happen? Right. We're going to gather here to eat the word. Yes. Emily's going to do a Bible study Saturday. on Saturday. Yeah. We're young ladies because we're going to eat the word. Yeah. Because we don't want Satan entering the daughters of Tucson. Well, come on. Mom. Are you hearing me? Yeah. We're going to, you know, Rob, Robert's going to do a men's Bible study. There's going to be a women's Bible study. Yeah. There's going to be kids' Bible study. Why? Because we want to eat the word. Because if we don't eat the word, we'll, we won't be consistent. Yeah. Honestly, if, if we're going to be consistent in our walk with God, yeah. there's something we have to do. We have to eat the word every single day. Yeah. There isn't a day that goes by that Nellie and I don't eat the word together. That we're talking about a scripture or something. There's not a day that goes by. It's not because I'm a preacher. It's because I don't want to give Satan an opportunity to get inside of me. And take control of my life. And, and because I know I, there's something I like to eat. But I like to eat the word. And he could have ate the word. And here Jesus was giving him another shot. Here, take this bread. And he didn't eat it. And he lost he lost out on eternity. I know that God prophesied that, but guess what? Judas had a free will just like you. Yes, he does. How many want to eat this word? Yes. How many want to eat the word? Yes. How many want to eat the word of God? Yes. Lift your hands to Jesus yes. right now. Yes. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. Father, we thank you for your word. Yes. It's a lamp unto our feet. Yes. It is a light upon our path. Yes. We thank you for your power and your grace upon your sons and your daughters and I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that we would just take we would partake we would eat the word of the Lord and it would get us on the inside and change us from the inside out Father I am so blessed about these kids these young people that quote the word obviously they've been eating the word and we know that they're never never ever going to forget this because it says train up a child the way they go when they get old they shall not depart from it God brother we learn we, we don't want to be filled with worms we want to be filled with life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth amen and amen can we give God a shout of praise right now Brothers, I'm going to need your help. I want you to come lay hands on this young lady. I forgot your first name. I'm sorry. Blanca. Would you please stand up? Would you please tell me to pray for her? And if you help me as well, would you guys just gather around her and stretch forth your hands? Blanca, when I, when I greet, uh, yes. greeted you, 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 you know something about the train. 
And I heard the voice of the Lord say this. This is going to be a year of great fear for you. A year where God himself is going to come to you and give you the grace you need to raise your children. Every one of your children will know God. I am going to protect you from evil. I'm going to come to you and I'm going to rain my blessing upon you, daughter, because you have gone, you went through warfare in 2018 that almost, almost destroyed you. But I rescued you time and time and time and time again. And the Lord said that even right now, what's going to happen, I'm going to even hand you the bread tonight and you are going to eat it. And the Lord said that I'm going to use you to feed your children. I'm going to give you the bread of life, daughter. And there's going to be a day when you're going to own your own business, daughter. And in the midst of all the children and take being a mother with trying to make it, the Lord says you're going to stand on your two feet and you're going to be successful in the sight of heaven. For my eyes of favor is even upon you right now. There was a place where you even felt that, Lord, have you rejected me? Have you forgotten me? It's been, it's been times where you have been had relationships that were dysfunctional. Even decisions you made that were not the best. But there's something called the grace of God. He loved you to the end. And because he loves you to the end, daughter, he wants me to tell you that he's going to find a place where you can serve where you can thrive, where your vision can come to pass, because this is a year where God putting ideas, God casting vision inside of you. It's not too late, Father, from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Bless your daughter right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Give God a shout of praise right now. Give God a shout of praise. Brother, would you please stand up? Would you just stand up, please? Please, just come out to the aisle. Just lift your hands to Jesus right where you're standing. Just step about two feet that way. Thank you. When I when I saw you outside, I felt I felt this. I felt, I felt this like there was a spirit of excellence just all over you. That there's this, this was somebody that knows where he's going knows what he wants to accomplish, and he knows what he wants to do. But right now, what you need is connections to connect to the right people. And God says this to you, young man, 2023, in these next few months, God's gonna connect you with people who are going to help you fulfill the desire of your heart. Because you are going to be a man that's going to take care of your family in a way, and they're going to look to you in leadership. They're going to look to you for wisdom. They're going to look to you for guidance. But also, there's going to be a day when I elevate you and you're employed ease will look for guidance and direction as a result of what I do through you. Because I am even imparting to you supernatural strategy right now, son. Because the Lord says there was a moment when you felt like you failed a test. The Lord says you did not Fail. What it did is it redirected you and set you on a different trajectory that I wanted you to go because I have your best interest in my heart, says the Lord. Father, from the top of his head to the sole of this young man's feet, touch him right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, never to be the same again. Come on and give God a shout of praise right now. I know I want to eat bread. I want to eat bread. I want to eat bread. How many want to eat bread? Put your hand on your heart right now. Put your hand on your heart right now. I want you to, I want you to say this. Jesus. Jesus. Here I stand. Here I stand. 
right now. I don't want to be like Judas. And just take it. I want to eat that bread of life. If that's my life, my substance, my salvation, my healing, my deliverance, my breakthrough. And right now, God, I'm not going to eat the word when I want to. I'm going to eat it when it's given. Every single day. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God a shout of praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mom. Praise Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> Somebody's going to win tonight, man. Somebody's going to win We got four bicycles. We're going to do the adult one first. Hey. Oh, okay. I know the adult round. Do the adult laugh. You want to do the adult laugh? Uh, I'm supposed to have to give you the mic. Okay. Oh, who's going to do this? Uh, who's going to do this? Where's where Ezekiel? Ezekiel? Ezekiel, come up here. Okay, so if you want to get out your raffle tickets, this is the part that you want to do. Last week, it's okay. Oh, you go ahead. Okay, this okay. is for the adult, the iPad. Okay, okay, right, take it up. Go. <laughs> okay, close your eyes. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh. Okay. 0-3-9-7-8-9. Oh, oh, my brother! I told you! Wow. Wow. <laughs> I pray that the writer is <laughs> the writer. Really advise him. You know what he's doing? Alrighty, so this one is for the big boys fight. The big boys fight. What the hell is the big boys? Um, it was whoever wanted to put put their name in the yeah. big. Okay, okay, okay. Daisy, close your eyes. You want to read it out? The number.